Hey everybody, what's going on? Thanks for swinging by, I sure do appreciate it. If this is your first time with the channel, my name is Mark. Welcome to Fit and Fire. Let's get into this video. This time we're gonna be talking about the SAR USA SAR 9, and this is the cheapest pistol that I have ever purchased in my life. And we're gonna be talking about all of that coming up here in just a second. But before we get into that, I wanted to take a second to talk about a company that I fully support and put uh, my name to, and that's going to be USCCA. I am a card carrying member of USCCA. I pay my dues every single month. I am in their elite tier, and there are a number of different tiers that you could get into if you're looking for a company that will protect you before, during, and after a personal defense encounter. Now, I'm not getting paid to say anything good, bad, or indifferent about USCCA. This is not an ad read. I do have a link down in the description below. If you guys are interested in checking them out, just go ahead and click that link and it'll send you right over to sign up should you decide to do so. I do not get any type of affiliation kickbacks or anything like that from USCCA. It is just a link to get you over where you need to be and let them know that I sent you. That's it. But at the end of the day, I firmly believe in everything that they're trying to do and wanted to talk about them to you guys, let you know that they are there to protect you while you are protecting your family. So check them out and naturally use the link so they know that I sent you. All right, let's get into this pistol. This, man, this is kind of a crazy pistol for a couple different reasons. Number one, it is extremely affordable for pretty much anybody that's looking for a pistol. Are there less inexpensive pistols? Is that a word? If, is there cheaper pistols out there? Yes, there is. <laughs> that's what I'm trying to say. But uh, I found that this pistol is checking a lot of blocks that I really, really do like, but there are some concerns that I have with it. So naturally, I'm going to talk about the good with the bad and then give my opinions at the end of the video as I normally do and kind of give you the so what as to should you purchase one of these, should you carry one of these, uh, is this better for concealed carry, home defense or whatever. Talk about all of that at the end. All right, so naturally full disclosure, I'm not getting paid to say anything good, bad or indifferent about this pistol. I purchased this pistol on my own and am doing a review. SAR USA has no idea that I am even reviewing this pistol. So we are gonna talk about the good, we're gonna talk about the bad and go from there. With that being said, this is the love child of a Glock and an HK. And it is extremely apparent in the slide and the trigger assembly for this pistol that is going to be almost identical to that of a Glock 17. You can see it not only in the barrel lugs, but also the double captive recoil spring. Uh, you can see it in the components on the slide itself and then in the trigger assembly as well. Now, when I had this transferred to me after I purchased it, I had my FFL, Jim from Fly Monkey Gunworks. He took a look at it and he's also a Glock armorer. And he said, yes, these are in fact very, very similar in design. Not exact, but very, very similar. So you should be getting the same reliability that you would expect from a Glock in this pistol. Now the other side of it is going to be the very similar design in the frame to that of the HK VP9 or the P30. You're gonna notice that in not only the texture here on the pistol grip, but also the fact that you're going to get uh, three back straps and three side panels to fit this pistol to your hand perfectly. It's gonna end up giving you about 27 different combinations, just like you would find on a VP9. So here's the so what about all of that I just said. Seemingly, you're going to get the reliability of a Glock 17 with the ergonomics of a VP9. That is something that really caught my eye when I first started looking at these here recently. Let's talk about some of the things that you've got going on with it. Naturally, uh, you're going to have 17 round magazines. These seem to be very similar in design to a VP9 magazine, but I have not been able to 
get my hands on a VP9 magazine to find out whether or not these are compatible. I will look into that as we move forward, but for this video, I had not been able to uh, confirm that as of yet. The magazine release here with all the ergos on this pistol are really, really nice, exactly where you would expect them. And it is reversible to the other side, just like you would expect on a Glock. The internals for that is again, almost identical to a Glock as well. So that's really nice. You can also tell that on the cutouts here on the magazine, they have cutouts on either side, which is a indication that it is reversible. Takedown on this is going to be exactly like you would expect from a Glock pistol as well. And then it does have an ambidextrous manual safety. Now, I'm not a fan of manual safeties uh, for one, specific reason and that is if you don't use this safety and it inadvertently gets turned on as you draw you're trying to pull the trigger nothing's happening you're going to tap rack nothing's happening so if you do purchase this pistol in your draw stroke you need to practice turning that safety off or putting it on fire every time you draw your pistol um, it's in a really good place so your thumb naturally kind of gravitates to it and it can be used as a rest. So if you are drawing, just go ahead and turn that off, swipe that safety every single time you draw this pistol. So that's one of the things that you'll need to keep an eye out for. Standard uh, three dot sights on this. Uh, and the interesting thing is if you put a light to these white Three dot sights they will glow they're a luminescent um, something i didn't pick up on until i started to put it away in the safe thought i saw something glowing charged them up and they do glow not very bright but it's better than nothing i guess and um, the rear sight looks to be a novak style dovetail driftable rear sight so if you need to move it left or right for windage or kind of zeroing your pistol um, with the ammunition that you're using you can do that which is a pretty nice feature so there's that uh, trigger on this go ahead and clear it to make sure we're good to go is very similar to that of a glock pistol so you're going to have some take up there's going to be some creep and mush in that trigger and then it's going to break over. Here's your reset right there. Not too bad, um, very similar to a Glock once again. And then here's your trigger pull again, little creep, and then it breaks over. Now I will say that when I first got this out of the box, there was a very gritty trigger with this, but after 250 rounds, it has really kind of smoothed itself out and it feels pretty decent. Coming in right around that six to six and a half pound mark on the trigger pull weight gauge, whatever you want to call it. And um, so not too bad. I thought it's doing pretty decent for this type of pistol and the money that you're paying for it. So the first 250 rounds has been all 115 grain nine millimeter. And I've used three different types of ammunition, Wolf steel case, I've used new production, blazer brass <laughs> and then I've used some reman stuff that I had left over as well and it used all of that just fine a lot of people said that uh, you should start off with 124 grains and kind of work the springs in a little bit but I started off with 115 and 250 rounds later not a single issue so that is very promising with that being said overall experience very good so far, but we're going to go ahead and continue to put rounds through this to see how well it does moving forward. But that's not to say that everything with this pistol has been good. I've got three major concerns when it comes to this pistol. Some may be a little nitpicky, uh, but for me, there could be no-goes when it comes to deciding whether or not I would carry this pistol or modify it or update it or upgrade it or whatever you want to say it um, so let's get into that first and foremost of the 250 rounds that i shot 115 grain rounds uh, the ejection pattern on this was very erratic 
Uh, some of it was coming off the side, just kind of dribbling off the side. I had a few rounds come back and hit me in the forearm here. One flew back so mildly that as it landed on my arm, it just kind of landed and stayed there. Give me a little bit of a burn, not that big of a deal, but you know, someone taking a new person, maybe uh, a girlfriend or uh, a young person just getting shooting, um, that round coming back, burning them could be a detriment in going out and shooting again. And then I had a few come straight back, not hard enough to hit me in the face or anything like that, but just kind of came back and then in between my arms as I was shooting. So kind of poor ejection, erratic ejection uh, out of this so far, which would tell me that there is a issue with the extractor and the ejector. Maybe the geom geometry of those two are not as well, uh, is not as good as it could be, I guess is what I'm trying to say. Uh, but I'm not an engineer. I would like to see them take a look at that again, see if they can improve that. So that's number one. Number two is going to be the sights. Uh, I'm not a fan of three dot sights, but that's really not the issue. Uh, I could swap these sights out. And if I were to keep this and use this as a personal defense pistol, I definitely would. And for, for one major issue, that's gonna be this rear sight here. If you've been with the channel at all, you know that I don't like these styles of sights where it is sloped in the front portion of it. And that is because of one-handed manipulations. Now, a lot of people will be like, oh, well, you never use that, or you know, that's not even really a thing, or whatever. And that's, that's fine, that's your opinion. Um, I have a young daughter. Uh, when I'm with her and we're out doing our thing out in town or whatever, uh, I'm always carrying and I'm always cognizant of what I'm going to do if I get into a situation where I need to defend myself and protect my daughter at the same time. Uh, there could be a situation where I am trying to hold her, move her aside while I'm engaging at the same time. And if that's the case, Maybe I limp wrist it or don't get a good grip on the pistol or whatever the case may be. There's a malfunction, stove pipe. If I need to tap and rack this pistol, it's gonna be extremely difficult to do that with this sloped rear sight. A lot of training that I've been through have taught that and taught me how to do one-handed manipulations. So anytime I look at a pistol, the rear sight is going to be uh, something I look at to see if there's going to be a good ledge. If not, then I need to change out the sights and get them exactly where I want them so I can conceal carry this pistol. With that being said, I don't really know if there are sights out there that are compatible with this. I'm not 100% sure what the setups are uh, as far as the rear sight being a Novak style sight, the front sight being a Glock style sight? Are there companies out there that are making this type? I, I'm not sure. If you guys know, sound off in the comment section down below. Help educate me on this one. I'm struggling here. I would like to conceal carry this pistol, but that's one area that I probably would shy away from. So there's that. Then the final piece on this is going to be the pick section here on the dust cover. If you guys don't know, this underside of the barrel here is called a dust cover. Most modern pistols, most striker fired polymer frame pistols today is going to have some type of pick section here for you to add a light or a laser or a light laser combination or whatever the case may be. And I was excited about this pistol because of everything going on with it until I got to that and I tried to attach my TLR1 to it and it would not stay on. So then I checked my X300 from Surefire. Does not fit. Okay. Maybe a more budget option like the Olight PL2 would go on there. That doesn't fit either. So the three lights that I have at my disposal, the Surefire X300, the Streamlight TLR1 HR, and the Olight PL2 will not fit on this pistol. And that is a major letdown by SAR USA. Now, 
In their defense, they do offer a light from the manufacturer that will fit on this pistol, and you can pick it up in the SAR 9X, I think. It's kind of the upgraded version of this pistol that has a red dot cut and comes with a holster and extended magazines and stuff like that. It will also come with a light as well. The concern that I have is, will there be a manufacturer that not only makes a holster for the SAR-9, but also makes a holster for the SAR-9 and their light? That's a concern that I have as well. So realistically, this pistol is going to end up being relegated to that home defense nightstand style pistol that you're going to have to use a handheld light with unless you go ahead and purchase one of the lights from SAR USA. You can attach it on there and then use it on, um, use it as home defense. Unless you're lucky enough to find a company that does make holsters for this. If there is, sound off in the comment section down below. I'd appreciate the assistance on that as well. So let's talk about my opinions uh, about this pistol. I really like it. I was really impressed by not only its reliability in shooting the first 250 rounds with no issues whatsoever, but I also like the ergonomics. Um, there are some really great pros going with this pistol, but then again, the letdown is my inability to use the light that I want on this pistol. I use those types of lights, the larger um, kind of full-size lights on a compact or full-size pistol because it acts as kind of as a counterweight in helping mitigate recoil so I can get rounds on target faster. And then it also allows me to get positive ID on targets that may be a little bit further away than what I would gauge a target with a micro compact or a subcompact. So that was kind of the big letdown. Now, that's not to say that you couldn't carry this. I, I think this would be a great concealed carry pistol. And in addition to that, um, if SAR could figure out how to adjust this trigger guard here, maybe pull the geometry back a little bit, uh, maybe shave off some of this uh, lip that it has right here on the, you know, the bevel here on the trigger guard, then it should fit a light no problem. That's kind of my take on this. Good pistol, good price, couple concerns, but stuff that could be overcome by, you know, changing sides or purchasing a, uh, a light such as a TLR7A or maybe if you want to stay budget friendly, do an Olight PL Mini. Those lights would fit on this, no problem, and uh, should work okay. But again. I like the larger lights for me, and since it didn't have it, or couldn't accept it, that was a bit of a letdown. So there you have it, SAR-9. Uh, we're gonna continue to shoot this. We're gonna continue to get some rounds through this uh, with not only heavier weight bullets like the 124 and 147 grains, we're also gonna look at some personal defense weapon, or personal defense ammunition as well, such as the SIG Veeb Crown, some Winchester silver tips and some um, critical defense. See if there's going to be any issues with feeding as we get the round count higher and higher with this pistol. But there you have it. Uh, that is my overview of the SAR 9 and my take on it. Sound off in the comment section down below. Have you had any experience with the SAR 9? If you have, what has been your experience? And if you haven't, check these out. Are you planning on looking into it? I, I think for 250 bucks, if you can get in on that price, go ahead and drop the 250 bucks, see what it's all about. And then if it's not right for you, you probably could unload it and make most of your money back. That's pretty much gonna cover it this time. I really appreciate you guys swinging by and staying until the end. That is pretty awesome for you to do that. Make sure you guys are subscribed, give me a thumbs up, I would really appreciate it and it would help the channel as well. If you're interested in helping the channel, one of the best ways that you can do that outside from a financial aspect is to share this video with your friends, that would be appreciated too. As always, we're gonna go ahead and get out of here. Thanks again, I really appreciate it. Freedom through strength, here comes a high five. Catch you guys later.
Bye, y'all.